What is up guys and welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud. This is going to be more of like a vlog style of kind of going about and what all we have to do today. First thing we got to do is get Frosty dropped off at the diesel shop not far from here. Why do we got to get it dropped off? Well, Frosty's got a little squeak, 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 squeak that I want to get taken care of. You can hear it probably in the background. It's also got a couple other just small things that I just want to have him look over the entire truck just to make sure it is A1, perfect, 100% ready to go. That's just kind of something we like to do before we send our trucks off is just have them looked completely through just to make sure everything's perfect. So we're going to go get the truck dropped off and we've got a couple other things that we're going to be doing here, but I'll save that to reveal in a little bit here. But don't forget, you guys only have... I think 12 days left to enter to win either Frosty or that Platinum over there. And every $5 is five entries to win. But that deal ends on December 1st, which is in like five days. So you might want to get in on that, get your entries while you can. Information is in the description below. Just stopped by Gander Outdoors, actually. We did drop Frosty off to get those couple things checked on, and we're also headed right now in the Platinum, which could be your truck. We're headed to the paint and body guy who's been working on the King Ranch. So we're gonna get on over there, and we're gonna pick that truck up and just see how good he did do. And if you can tell that the truck was ever really dented, or had this couple little paint chips and stuff that were actually pretty big little spots. See if you can tell that they've been worked on or if it just looks, you know, perfect. So we're gonna get over there, we're gonna get the truck picked up. Once we get the truck picked up, we're gonna swing over by my parents to drop it off. But before we do that, we're gonna take a closer look at that truck and just see how good he did. We do have Dad's King Ranch back and it looks really, really good. So huge thank you to the guy that fixed this. He's gonna be doing some stuff for us on the regular cab, so stay tuned. We just kind of did like an experiment with this truck because, you know, my dad's like, worst case scenario, if it doesn't turn out perfect the way, you know, I'd like it, you know, I can go buy an off-road bumper anyway, but if it turns out perfect, I might keep it. So he got this done on this truck and it actually turned out really, really good. Well, let's just get to showing you how he did. So this is the side that had the huge, ugly dent in it. Do you guys remember that? And everybody's like, dude, the bumper's got a huge dent. What happened? It's so ugly, you know, like fix it, whatever. Well, you can see how he fixed that and it looks really good like you'd never know it was there and it's shaped exactly like this side so it doesn't look like anything different other than the lighting with the sun on this side right now so it's making it look brighter um, but anyways it doesn't look any different the shape is perfect the form is perfect and it looks absolutely amazing and the bumper just like he totally fixed it did his magic and you'd never know it was there coming back here there's a spot right here where this whole corner actually, it was kind of hard to tell in videos because I didn't really film that much, but this whole corner was chipped. Okay, so there was a big chip here and a rust spot starting. I don't know if water just runs down here, it just sits back inside here and it just does that, but anyways, huge chip right here with a big rust spot. And if you look here, you would never know it was there. I mean, the guy, I mean, other than my fingerprints, I kind of smeared it up. But anyways, the guy did super, super good with that and it looks amazing, amazing, amazing. So anyways, Again, with that spot, perfect. What was the other thing? Oh yeah, in here, there was a couple chips and scratches, deep scratches and chips and stuff here, some gashes, and he fixed that. And again, you would never know that it was there. And with this side, there were some big slide marks and scratches down the side that were actually kind of deep from actually my dad hitting a pole coming out of his, I think it was his office driveway. Um, he hit a pole and it really just, tore up the side a little bit and a big deep gash and scratches down the side here. I mean, this fender was all messed up and kind of scratched up um, and all through here, all that stuff. And again, you would never know it was there. I mean, you can get as close as you want and you would never know all those deep, deep scratches and gashes were on that side. And um, so, I mean, if you, if you ask me, I'd give the guy a 10 out of 10. I mean, he did a really, really good job and he fixed all the eyesores on the truck that kind of made it not as pleasurable to look at. He fixed that and it just looks, it looks perfect again. I mean, it looks really, really good. I mean, obviously perfect, perfect. Cause you know, the truck still does have some small rock chips and stuff here and there, but he was just fixing all those big gashes and chips and dents and stuff that were just kind of like annoying and in the way. It looks really good. A part of the video that I thought I'd throw in here because we're giving this truck away possibly depending on you know whether or not the winner picks it. So I thought I would take this as an opportunity. Sorry, just kind of like a little spot in the camera right here you can see it's from like a little chip it looks like there's a chip in the lens but anyway so we're giving away this truck possibly if the winner picks this over the five nine so i kind of wanted to do a side by side and show you not just like aesthetics on the 
outside like so other than the decals on the window being different generations of loud and proud decals there's really not any major differences no i'm totally messing with you but in terms of this truck obviously whole front clip completely different and they did like with this truck they for the first time in a long time actually changed you know the cab setting the bed layout the front clip layout like everything is actually different and the parts aren't interchangeable 100 percent back and forth you know from one truck to the next versus before you could take a 2013 like this and you could put the whole front clip and bed and cab and everything on a 7.3 and it would all fit because pretty much the layout of the cab and the bed and stuff it all fitted still the same so even though it appeared much different inside and out the actual fitment of the stuff really did not change much with this truck everything is very very different everything they, they took a huge change of it other than the engine itself the engine had some updates with the turbo and some other small stuff but like for the most part that configuration itself did not really change so when you come into the interior obviously with this truck you've got everything's updated everything's different everything's you know new whatever seats are a little different everything's a lot thinner if you look in the back here i just bought a hunting blind but anyways the seats are really thin you see that they're real small real thin real narrow it gives you tons of leg room in the back if you come look at this truck, oh, hey, bud. <laughs> the horses were like right by my head. Um, anyways, if you come look at this truck on the inside, very different. Everything's big and beefy, thick, giant seats. I mean, everything's real, real big. I mean, you got all the, you know, hard plastic stuff, steering, you know, steering wheel configuration is a little different. The dash is completely different. Obviously, it's a different year of truck. But I'm saying like a lot more plasticky stuff, a lot more just like hard, hard plastics, which I get. You know, it is easier to clean hard plastics. For the most part though, just a lot more plastic, plastic, plastic. You come into the back seat, again, not as much room, still plenty of room. I mean, come on, we're getting spoiled with trucks now, but seats are just huge. I mean, they're just so thick and massive that like, it just takes up so much space in the back seat. And that's what they changed about the newer trucks is they changed the seat forming, you know, to make them a little bit different to where they kind of like, almost like come in and they contour to the back seat people so it gives them more freedom and more room to move around back there if they are like grown adult you know men or women they can comfortably sit back there without feeling like you know their knees are in their face and it's just too tight but in terms of that those are the main differences between these two trucks is interior is a huge one just the complete body and you know shape of the bed and the fenders and the front clip and all that stuff not necessarily a bad thing but just kind of showing you guys like the main differences everything about these trucks that was more like sharp crisp edges and stuff like that and squared off stuff versus like this is more rounded like everything's more rounded the front end's more rounded the fenders are more rounded you know the body lines more rounded just everything's more rounded i love them both a ton but they are just different in those areas. And we are back in the shop with the second gen Longhorn. We have not been in the shop in a minute here with this truck, so we are back at it, trying to get it somewhat closer to the stages of being painted and a little rust fixed. So, getting super excited. That paint guy that did the work on the Ford, we are like, wow, that's amazing. He fixed all the small stuff and it looks good, and we've seen some of his other stuff that he's done. He used to do a bunch of stuff for like dealerships and insurance work and stuff like that for you know other big businesses, and so he just decided to start doing it himself, start his own little shop, get his own thing going, and he's busy already. He's got a lot of stuff piling up, so we're gonna try to get this truck to him as soon as possible. We just need the hood, front bumper, and rear bumper, and the bed put back on, and we're all good to go. So we're gonna try to button this up in the next couple days and get it all ready. However, let's get this frame finished up because Although we want to get the bed on, we have to finish the frame here first, and I'm gonna get the bed put on probably tomorrow. So I've got the heater in here, we're gonna keep the shop at about 80 degrees, but what I'm gonna do is actually put like a protective enamel coating, like just like a flat black, and everything that I didn't chassis saver, which I just chassis savered a ton more and got the insides and all that stuff, everything that I did not chassis saver on the back half, I'm gonna be using this. And this is just to cover up like, you know, the leafs and just stuff like that, that like I don't want to put that heavy duty chassis saver on just because it's going to be really hard to get in all the cracks and crevices, but I want to put something on that's still protective. And I've already sanded that down and a lot of other small areas. So I'm going to get to working on this and we can finally get this back half of this frame all buttoned up and ready to go. Finally, we have the back half of this frame done. I did get both of the leaf packs coated. I got the hangers coated. I did part of the axle just down there where the block is. 
Got the heads of those little bolts and stuff coated. You can see how that turned out. It's still wet, so it's not dry yet. But finally, finally ready to get the bed on tomorrow and then go get the thing quoted. I'm trying to debate, so let me know because I gotta make the decision in the next like day. Um, when it comes to the paint of this truck, what should I go with? I'm thinking about just going with this maroon color, the whole thing, but adding some more flake to it so it's more like pop in your face, but not too crazy and just kind of skipping the two-tone. I personally don't care for the two-tone. I don't really love it. Um, it's cool if it was like old school, all original and in perfect shape, but I'm not gonna go redo it all with the same two-tone. I just don't like it. That's just my preference. If you guys can help me comment down below, what would you do? If you wouldn't do that color over again, what would you make it? The reason I'm thinking about going with that though is because it'll also save the guy some time with having to do door jams all over again because the door jams and everything in the inner fenders and under the carpet and everything else is all that color already so it wouldn't be like a huge you know mix up down the road if the truck ends up in somebody else's hands everything is like done the colors all match up and everything is just good to go and will just look right and look good so i don't know let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about that but if you ask me i think that's pretty good idea. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully guys did enjoy this video. Please smash that thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. Do not forget to enter to win the 96.5 speed Frosty or 2017 F250 Platinum. Every $5 is five entries, but that deal ends in I believe five or six days by the time you see this video and the overall giveaway ends on December 8th. So get in while you can. Time's running out. Thank you guys so much. Information in the description below. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.